Hello, my name is Peter Nicholson, and I'm here to give you an overview of the many changes and additions that the 1.2 Cicero update for Imperator Rome is bringing to the table. Before we begin, I'd like to stress how important the community has been to us in creating this update. The Cicero update has undergone a period of open beta testing, and the feedback we've received on matters great and small has been invaluable in finding the right balance for our changes going forwards. Without further ado, a much anticipated part of this update is the removal of monarch power. In addition to this, a new resource known as political influence is being introduced to the game. Political influence represents the currency of favors and backroom dealings, the ability of a government to weight their decisions with actual power. Political influence is generated by the holders of your core eight offices, scaled by their loyalty. A loyal cabinet will remain a highly advantageous resource for exerting your every whim. The skills of a monarch will not be entirely without purpose, however, with each skill providing a useful national bonus proportional to the ruler's skill in a category. It became apparent over time that we needed something unique to represent the military accolades of a nation in unlocking military traditions, and a highly self-contained military experience resource has been added for this purpose. Military experience is generated over time at a modest base rate, but is modified by the average combat experience of your national cohorts, ensuring that only nations with the best trained forces are able to reach their true potential. The employment of mercenary forces will detract from a nation's military experience gain, but have been made vastly cheaper to maintain to compensate for this. To augment this specialized system, armies will now be able to engage in a military drill, passively increasing their combat experience to a cap at greatly increased maintenance and increased risk of becoming loyal to their commander. In an effort to further accentuate the uniqueness of each government type, we've overhauled laws for all government forms. Each system is noticeably different from other government forms and comes with its own challenges and pitfalls, as well as the ability to tailor playstyle accordingly. Tribal laws have been reworked into two distinct paths, the left-hand route will take the player down the path of decentralization, embracing a nomadic lifestyle with focuses on raiding, clan chiefs, and tribesmen. The right-hand route emphasizes the path to centralization and civilization, with the ultimate aim of reforming the government into a more settled form. Laws will not all be available for change instantly, instead requiring certain centralization thresholds to be met. Laws for monarchies can yield some powerful bonuses and will unlock over the course of the game as they are unlocked by technology. Each law you enact in the main categories will favor either the governors or generals within your realm, accentuating the need to balance well. The choice is still in your hands, however. Exceptional military bonuses can be gained at the cost of angering your governors and risking rebellion. For republics, law categories will be made available over time in a similar fashion to monarchies. Instead of balancing positive and negative modifiers, as in the old system, only positive country modifiers will be applied. The catch, however, is that each law is associated with a faction that feels strongly on or against the issue at hand. Many of the most lucrative or tyrannical laws are opposed by the populist faction. Be careful to consider the strength of your democracy before enacting. Additionally, two new government interactions have been made available for republics. By popular demand, a Republican version of the War Council interaction can now be acquired, as well as an interaction to submit your favored gubernatorial candidates for evaluation by the Curate Assembly. These interactions are mutually exclusive and unlocked by your choice in the new Laws of Assembly category. Perhaps the largest and most sweeping change to the fabric of Imperator is our overhaul of the POP management system. The promotion, assimilation, conversion, and movement of POPs will no longer depend on direct player management. Instead, POPs will be subject to an impetus to convert, assimilate, or promote over time based on local situation and national policies. Migration will also occur over time and will occur when a POP is able to move to a nearby territory that has a higher migration attraction than the territory in which it currently resides. Governor policies, buildings, and various national laws and decisions will interact with and steer these systems allowing for limited control over a living and breathing population simulation which responds to the environment around it. In a similar effort to breathe more life into the world of Imperator, cities will no longer be the default state for all administrative units on the map. Instead, territories, as we've elected to call them, 
may qualify as a settlement, a city or a metropolis. Cities have been placed in many major historic city sites at the start of the game, with all other territories becoming settlements. Settlements will no longer display modelled buildings, bringing a new beauty to the map of Imperator. The distinction between territory types will not merely be cosmetic, however. Settlements, whilst unable to support vast populations, will benefit from the ability to sustain up to one of six unique buildings, letting you specialise them into farms, mines or more to support the population centres of your realm. Cities, on the other hand, will have access to 14 building types and will receive bonuses to population capacity and much more. Buildings will not be capped in cities, allowing for much more granular control over pop-type ratios, output and happiness. If a city reaches a certain threshold, it may be upgraded to metropolis status, yielding further bonuses to the resident population. Cities can, of course, be founded or raised, giving you ultimate control over the fabric of your nation. To further enhance the addition of city types and population simulations, a food supply mechanic is being introduced. Each pop will consume food from the province's supply, adding an extra level of internal management to growing nations. The import of food will play an even more important role in the Cicero update, as a reliance on external partners for trade will put you at risk if you find yourself in conflict with your grain supplier. As the food supply of the province increases, the growth level of pops within it will increase accordingly. To account for this, many growth modifiers have been converted to food income modifiers. Food will have repercussions on warfare too, as a province with a large food stockpile will be tougher to siege. Sieges will slowly begin to drain the food supply of the province, falling famine to invaders if the supply reaches zero. Friendly units will forego attrition damage if a positive food supply is present, consuming from the food supply instead. If a hostile force occupies a province capital, they will be able to consume from the food supply instead, giving good reason to prevent invaders from occupying your lands. Alongside all these keystone features, a huge amount of additional work has been done on expanding the world we are building in Imperator. A large number of flavour events, heritages and country unique inventions have been included. A lot of work has gone into AI in the Cicero update, with a focus on improving the performance of key players in the ancient world and providing an end-game threat to players in all theatres. Finally, I'd like to thank you all for supporting Imperator as we continue in our journey. And I hope you all enjoy the many aspects of the Cicero update in true Roman fashion.